What's up everybody, this is Bobby Bushank and today I'm bringing you an African Cichlid episode. It has been some time since, uh, since I've made um, you know, an African Cichlid video and I thought I would give you guys a little update on this tank um, just so you guys could see some things but also this video is actually not um, an update video like so but we are going to talk about a Rosses fry or well not a Rosses fry specifically but how I made these small fry go together with bigger African cichlids and how you guys can do that as well because a lot of people are wondering about it and I, I did wonder about it myself for some time ago um, if I could keep these very small cichlids with bigger cichlids and things like that um, and of course you can and by the way um, look at this plant right here I just got this plant in here um, I didn't really want it to be here in the front, I kind of wanted it to be more in the back but there is not really a lot of sand behind there because my friend Tosa digs around that area which is really annoying but he likes to do that to kind of mark his territory or something um, but I'll fix that soon. I might get some more of these plants actually and just place them along the back, I think they look really nice um, but anyway and um, you know if you want to if you want to keep small african cichlids together with um, you know bigger african cichlids um, there is one tip that i can give you which is probably one of the most you know um, common sense sort of tips um, which is your cichlids should be fed all the time because if they're hungry they're going to eat everything they see pretty much um, so you have to think about that um, it's very very important that you keep feeding them and you're sure that they're, they're well fed and things like that because you can actually some cichlids will actually accept pretty small um, African cichlid fry and they won't actually eat them um, if they're well fed. Um, now of course a lot of cichlids doesn't really care if they're well fed they'll just eat and eat and eat until they until they like explode or something it's insane. Um, but I mean you can you can really um you know when you when let me just give you a, a little idea of what i try to say to you guys because you know if uh, these are rotis fry i got them i bred them myself i've had them since they were born um, you know really awesome little fry i've always really loved them they're really awesome um, so it was a really hard decision for me to put it in this tank because i didn't really find any answers myself about this specific topic and a lot of people didn't really want to talk about it or they didn't really know anything about it because they were scared of it too um, so it was really just a really hard decision for me to to you know just see and experiment because of course I've experimented a lot in the past but if I would just put these cichlids in and they would just get eaten that would just break my heart like I really love these cichlids I've had them for a long time and things like that so that would be really really sad um, but I tried it anyway because um, I looked at these little guys right here and I looked at my yellow lab and they were almost the size of my yellow lab they are almost the size of him right now actually they are a little bit smaller than my yellow lab and I know that they don't eat my yellow lab I've had my yellow lab for like since the beginning actually I've had this guy for probably two years now and he doesn't really grow he also he just stays this size I don't know if it's a female or what but it's kind of weird um, I might actually get more of them so that they can breed because they're kind of cool. But, you know, I've had this yellow lab for a really long time. I've had big cichlids like the Kenya, the Venustus, the Alley, um, you know, the, where is it, the Ventosa down there. You know, even my big Synodontis catfish, you know, things like that. Um, and I know that they haven't eaten it. So I was like, hmm, maybe I can actually put these small cichlids in there. So I actually did. Um, what I did, what I did to try to kind of see if how I, I tried to kind of see how the cichlids and the catfish would kind of react. But you know, when I acclimate my fish, of course, it's going to be in a clear bag so that the other fish can see um, the new additions, so that they kind of can get introduced, but between um, you know a place where they can't touch each other, so that they won't tear each other apart, which is also really key, um, you know thing to do when you are acclimating cichlids by the way try to get um, some really clear bags um, at the stores to to kind of make sure that they can actually get used to each other a lot more um, and you know what 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 I did was that I just sat for like 10 minutes and I would just look if any of the cichlids would try to nip at the bag or try to kind of chase them or something like that 
Um, because the only things I was looking for was really that if the, the Kenya, for example, would come and bite in the back, because if it would do that, it gives you a sign that it wants to eat them, like right away. You can, I have, you know, I've fed them with live gobi fry before, I've fed them with uh, cherry shrimp and things like that. And when I put the bag in there and they see those small little, um, those little things are just nib at it like crazy because they know that is just food right there, right? Um, so I wanted to make sure that, you know, they didn't, um, you know, begin to eat them. But um, for a matter of fact, if it begins to do this sort of dancing sort of thing, I think you have seen my Kenya do that a lot in some videos. Um, it's actually only my Kenya that does that. Um, but it's mostly Mabuna that does that thing where they make this sort of aggressive dance where they like shake their whole body and their fins to kind of show that they're the boss. Um, it's kind of to intimidate other cichlids to kind of show that um, like that they are really tough, right? So if they do that, that just shows that they they are they they actually somehow accept the um, the cichlids. I don't know if you can say accept, but it won't eat them. It will just. Um, kind of be in this state where I think those guys are probably a little bit bigger um, than I thought so I have to kind of show them that I'm the boss that is exactly what is going through their head so that is what this is going to do and if it does that uh, then I know myself that it's going it, it, this is going to be a good addition because um, he might actually kill some of the um, the cichlids uh, well, the fry because um, like this cichlid, but like my Kenya is a really aggressive cichlid. Kenyas are generally uh, like one of the most aggressive cichlids in this hobby, and you know they get kind of big and they are really strong cichlids. They bark really, really hard and things like that. Um, so if if there's if I make a new addition in here that is really colorful or something like that, that will kind of um, automatically like intimidate my Kenya and he will begin to kind of show these aggressive behaviors and he might actually just kill them because he will just chase it constantly it's insane um, he has done that to many of my cichlids that i've been adding um, but you know if it did that to the to, to the abrosis um, you know that wouldn't really be a problem because um, when you just have if you have a lot of different um, if you got a lot of fry like um, that are the same species and when they get into a new environment um, they would, they will actually uh, like school together, um, like you can see these guys will school together to kind of make sure that they're safe. They always keep a look at each other. They always look at each other like, are you okay and things like that. They always try to protect each other, which is like this sort of, um, uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of like a family bond actually, um, but they do kind of protect each, each other by kind of looking intimidating by being um, multiple cichlids that stand together against one. So when these guys uh, saw the Kenya, he would the Kenya would of course chase them. He wouldn't eat them, but he would just chase them, right? So he would chase after them, show him um, like that he's aggressive and things like that, and he would like um, you know he will just chase them. But then they just all six of those abrosis will just clump up into one big sti uh, like a, one big school, right? And they were, he would get really intimidated. He would begin to dance and things like that, but he wouldn't pick at them, which is really important because. If a big cichlid, um, you know, pick at a small cichlid, it might actually eat it. Um, uh, it's actually true; it might actually just eat it because it's an aggressive cichlid. Um, but then, for me, that then I knew that this is going to be all right because um, it's just about having the fry in a specific size. Because I would say, like, if you have cichlids that are as big as mine, like, like my Kenya is probably like six, 16 or 17 centimeters long. Um, and my, my Venustis is probably the same size, uh, so is the Alvi. My Frontosa is probably 18 centimeters, 18, 19 centimeters. Um, my Synodontis are close to 20 centimeters. So, you know, these are really big cichlids, right? So, th these are some of the biggest cichlids, um, or well, the biggest normal cichlids you can get. Of course, Frontosas get really, really huge. Um, but even though you have some really big frontosa, I still think you could keep very small cichlids with them actually because I've seen like newborn African cichlid fry go together with frontosa just because frontosa is just so peaceful. Like it's it's the most, I would say it's probably the most peaceful African cichlid out there. They only ch chase each other, not... Okay, so my camera just stopped there for some reason but what I wanted to say is that Frontosa only chase each other, not other species, um, which is kind of unique to this uh, specific species, right? But it's it's 
it's like you can I've seen like in stores I've actually seen really really small almost newborn African secret fry together with 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 Frantosa. so you know you can you can do that but with with aggressive cichlids that is really the problem because aggressive African cichlids will just eat them right away like just right away because they see that as an opportunity of food right so you got to be sure that um, you know, you know your cichlids well, like do you have any peaceful African cichlids or do you have really aggressive African cichlids because that really does play a big role when it comes to this topic. Um, so I would say that you should, if you want to be like 100% safe that your cichlids are going to be safe, I would probably say they have to be about 6 centimeters long. Um, that is a really good size for them actually, which is a little over 2 inches if you guys wonder. Um, but you can do the calculations yourself if you want to, but, um, you know, and then I would suggest a lot of hiding places because a lot of hiding places always helps, like, small African cichlid fry are a little bit more um, sensitive to those aggressive behaviors because they might just get picked at more just because of their size, so you have to be sure that they have some hiding places, like, I got the, uh, the old plant that they are actually used to from the old tank, so they know this plant and they always clump up with this uh, plant if they're scared, so that is a really nice thing. Um, they glide through all the plants actually, they really enjoy the plants. Um, also because they kind of eat them um, and they are actually um, herbivores, so I actually think that they can actually digest the, the plants as long as it's some plants that, that they like and that it doesn't taste bad. Because I know that Anubias is something I don't really like because Anubias doesn't really taste that good um, for cichlids, that's why they don't really bother them. But, you know, that's basically all the tips I can give you guys. Like, be sure that they are s about 6 centimeters. be sure you don't have really aggressive cichlids, and that's pretty much it. But what I can say is that I have this really big Kenya right here. Um, you know, as soon as he sees me, he, al he always gets really intimidated, he always begins to kind of look at me and like, guard the area that he is ter terrorizing. So you got to be sure that you don't got some really big aggressive cichlids that might just pick at everything. But I know my Kenya is a lot more aggressive than many other African cichlids out there. So, But yeah, that is really all the tips I can give you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. And yeah, see you guys in another video.